Denmark being the happiest country in the world, that's Bogus, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> I've been living there for uh, 41 years now, 40 years, and I've been traveling at the same time a lot in Australia. Australia is, in my experience, the happiest place in the world, at least the kindest place in the world. I love spending time here. Pe <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Walking on the streets, walking in a hotel, people will always smile at you. I don't know if you realize that, but that, that's what it's like in Australia. In Denmark, the so-called happiest place in the world, when you walk the streets, people don't smile, people don't look at you. So it's really a pleasure to be here. If you think this is not right, I would just do a little test with you. If you would just turn to your neighbor. So two people looking at each other. One have to look serious. The other one, smile. Smile, smile, and see how long the other one can stay really serious. <laughs> okay, I get it. You're all failing already. <laughs> Great. So, in my experience, the only exception to the happy and kind Australians are those gorillas sitting at your border control. <laughs> I believe I've come into this country about 15, maybe more times now. I have never, ever managed to make any of them smile. <laughs> this winter, I brought my little daughter. She was like beautiful 10-year-old girl, long blonde hair. I said, go up there, smile at him. Look, he looks dangerous. He's not dangerous at all. He's really sweet, but smile at him. He was just sitting there really stern. He didn't do anything. So border control, they don't, they don't fall into the Australian category. All right, I was not here to talk about Australians. I was here to talk about how to get more success and well-being at work by training mindfulness. And that's a topic that I've been really, really passionate about for quite a few years. I have a background doing research in organizational development and how do we as adults learn and grow and become better at what we're doing. And a background in the corporate world. And then I have a very long background practicing and teaching mindfulness. And my passion over the last 10 years has been developing this organization potential project that brings mindfulness into very large organizations around the world to improve performance, to pr improve success, to improve well-being as well. And we work with many, many very large organizations. As you can see, blue chip companies, very high performing. These guys are actually embracing the concept of mindfulness. And when I travel around the world and ask these people, why do you actually, why do you actually implement long programs, spend a lot of time investing money in bringing mindfulness into the organization. All of them, regardless of being at Australia or Asia, Europe or North America, they all say that they're facing what we now call the paid reality. And the paid reality is a place where you're under pressure, where you are just clicking, where you're under pressure, where you're always on, where you're information overloaded and where you're distracted or working in environments that are really distracted. How many of you guys in here find that you are working and living in a paid reality? Please put up your hands. Okay, so that's about almost all of you. Welcome to the paid reality. What's happening in the paid reality is that our attention comes under siege. Our attention comes under a lot of pressure and that has impacts on the success and the well-being that we have at work. And what I'm going to talk about over the next 15 minutes is how can you use mindfulness to overcome this paid reality and have more success, have better performance, but also have a better life and be better human beings. So that's a lot in just 15 minutes, isn't it? You're still smiling. Good. Okay. With me. Wonderful. So basically attention, as was just talked about an hour ago on this stage, is a really, really, really important thing for our success whether it being as a great father or a great mother or a great partner or at work achieving a success in terms of getting the promotion or whatever we're looking for. And it is very important to have strong attention because success comes out of actions, right? Actions lead to success. Does that make sense? Have any of you any had, at any time had really great success without doing anything for it? Right? Okay, so actions come from making the right choices and making the right choices come from having the ability to pay attention to the right things at the right time in the right way. So there's a direct correlation, a direct link 
between our ability to actually pay attention to things and the success or lack of success we are getting from whatever we are doing. Does that make sense? Okay. So if this is really true, that attention is directly linked to success, then there is a really big problem nowadays, which is attention is going down. So there's been research done in organizations, people working in organizations, finding that our ability to actually pay attention is dropping radically. It's been doing so for two decades now, and it seems to continue. We're simply not able to pay as much attention for as long time as we were just some years ago. And if you put a number to this, it's 46.9% of our time on average that we're really not paying attention to what we're doing. 46.9% of our time, that's almost half of our life. And if you put this into a work context, basically half of the time we're paying attention to what we're doing and we're getting productive, we're getting you know, good results. And the other half of the time, the lights are on, but no one is really home less well-being and less success. Okay, so we have now entered what could be called the attention economy. We used to talk about having good time management skills, having good qualifications and so on. Nowadays, according to researchers, having good, strong, clear, calm attention is one of the main factors of actually being successful, of actually having a good work life. The attention economy. That's where we are in that now. And big question then for Australia is how attentive are you? I mean, you're all coming to the happiness conference. It's actually funny, the happiness conference in Australia, which is such a happy country. You should actually export this conference to like Denmark. I think we could learn something. Or at least to your border control. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to do a little test in terms of attention. How attentive are you guys? It will take you 45 seconds. It won't hurt a lot. I'm inviting you to close your eyes for 45 seconds and focus on just one thought. Could be the thought of something you've heard today or something that you have to do tonight. Focus on that thought only. If any other thoughts come into your mind, don't think them. All right, so you can let go of the thought now, open your eyes again. And with an honest raise of hands, how many of you had one or more than one other thought than the one that you had actually chosen? That's about almost all of you. It's called attention deficit traits. It's very normal, it's coming from the paid reality, so you're all part of this. It's a little bit like John on the screen here, sitting Monday morning, having to do really, really important work, but mind being somewhere else. Later in the day, he gets to play his golf, thinking, hopefully as his wife, we don't know, and at the end of the day, with this woman, thinking back at work. So we are very, very, in general, very, very preoccupied with what has happened and what will happen, and half of the time not present with what is happening right now. What is that doing to our success? Decreasing it. What is it doing to our well-being? Decreasing it. What is it doing to our social relations with our colleagues, with our friends, with our children? Decreasing it, obviously. Okay, so these were all the bad news, the attention deficit trade coming from the paid reality, but there is a great hope, and that is coming from neuroscience, and there's been quite some great research on this stage today talking about the neuroplasticity of the brain. Basically, this is what is inside of the brain, a huge neural network consisting of 100 billion of those balls you see out there, neurons, all connected by an average of 5,000 synapses, those bridges in between them. It's a massive network out there. And the great thing that researchers have found is that it is changing constantly. Every second of our life, it's reshaping itself according to how we use it. That means for every moment we smile, we are creating neural networks of smiling, of being happy. So that's apparently what happened to you guys and Australians in general. You just smile enough to be happy. 
So that's a great thing. But also, every moment we allow ourselves to be distracted by our mobile devices, by Facebook, by whatever. Every time we allow ourselves to be distracted, we create connections related to distraction. And every moment that we spend focused, we actually develop a more focused brain, a more present, a more attentive brain. And that then brings us to mindfulness, because mindfulness, with a very simple definition, is really about learning to manage our attention so that we can pay attention to the things we want to pay attention to at any given moment in our life. Or to put it in a really, really simple way, it's really training that attentional muscle that is between our ears so that we can have more attention, which comes to being tender, tenderness, having care for whatever we experience. So that's a very short definition of mindfulness. And I would like to take you through just a very brief mindfulness practice, if you're game for that. Are you in for it? Great, oh, wow, fantastic. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll guide you through four simple steps and then be silent for one minute. And those steps are the A for anatomy, it's the B for the breath, it's the C for accounting, and it's the D for distractions. So I'm inviting you once again to close your eyes and just take a moment to check in with your body posture that you're sitting comfortably. Allow both feet to rest on the ground. Straighten your back. Allow yourself to relax. And then direct your attention fully to the experience of your breath specifically at your, ab at your abdomen. Notice the air flowing in and the air flowing out. And count your breaths by counting at each out breath. One, breathing in, breathing out, two, breathing in, breathing out, three. As you reach 10, Count backwards down to one again. And any time you may find yourself distracted by thoughts or sounds, just acknowledge it and gently return your attention back to the breath. And so now in your own pace, let go of the attention on the breath, open your eyes and return the attention to this room. So this is a very, very basic exercise that can be done in the morning, in the evening, in the middle of the day, it can be done when you're standing in the traffic jam, it can be done in a supermarket, it can be done anywhere. And the great thing about it is as simple as it seems, it has a profound effect on our success on our attention and on our well-being in a very very simple way i'm going to explain you what exactly is going on in the brain as you're doing this it looks like this on the screen on the right hand side you see it says attention and you see a big blue dot just before the right hand side of your forehead that's the prefrontal cortex which is associated with attention and executive functioning that part of the brain is the one that makes you being attentive 
And every time your mind starts to wander, you see at the top of it, it says mind wandering, it's other parts of the brain that is activated. You become aware that you're wandering, you redirect and you become attentive again. Now I guess most of you during these few minutes of silence, you got distracted and you came back again. How many had that at least once? I guess all of you. So the good news is at least once you went through this fitness loop of training that attentional muscle of your brain, whereby when you have to listen to the next speaker or whatever you have to do next, you have a little slightly stronger attention, which is a great thing because you can use it for anything in life. And the researchers have actually looked at what does this do when you bring this kind of training into an organizational context? And as you can see, some of the results are quite amazing, like job performance goes up, so success, problem solving, job satisfaction, which is well-being, work-life balance, well-being, creativity and innovation, all of those goes up, and other things go down, like emotional exhaustion, which is the core component of burnout and stress. So well-being is strongly enhanced by this mindfulness training and applying that to the way that we're working and paying attention to whatever is happening to us right now. And while all of this is good for our success and for our well-being, I will end on one last thing, which is mindfulness has a much more profound effect on us as individuals and as groups. And I'm going to share that with the quote of one of our longest standing clients, a very large insurance company in Europe. And this guy on the screen now is Thomas Berg. He initiated a program seven years ago. And he came after eight weeks and he said, I initiated the program expecting that we would become more focused and productive. And then he continued talking to me and to the group and said, however, I realized another much bigger change. I experienced myself and my employees are becoming better human beings. So paying attention in the moment to whatever is in this moment, and especially at work where our attention is under pressure, is a fantastic tool for having a better life with more success, with more happiness, and with better well-being. And it's for free. And with those words, keep smiling and go home and start practicing a bit more of mindfulness. Thank you very much for listening. go to this uh, supermarket and shouting, I want to buy peace of mind. Then people laughing or people feel that person's mind is something wrong. <laughs> now this word connections is a really interesting one because our kids today are more connected than ever. Of course, then when you're in, a, in an institution, people call you up, <laughs> they tell you to perk up. Yeah, perk up, because I didn't think of that. I should have a happiness project, I decided. As soon as I have some free time, I'm gonna do that.